Um, this is the, the final word where we're going to have a look at the lineups, talk about the game. Uh, we'll hear from Steve Bruce and uh, talk about a couple of uh, where Steve Bruce goes next. So, the lineup first of all, and John, and then the two, which is Emil Croth coming in, mm -hmm. which surprised him because I think Mankio didn't deserve. Yes, I am saying that. I don't think Mankio deserved to be benched. And Sean Longstaff, uh, maybe to get a rest, as Steve Bruce has said, hinted that you'll be eased back in because of his injury. Mm. Although he started last week, so make your mind up with that. Yeah. What do you make of the lineup? Uh, it was just daft, to be honest. Like We should have kept the same lineup as what we did at Arsenal. Um, there was no injuries, as per se, was there? Except um, for Marlon St. Maxman. Except for Marlon. Missed him the day, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We needed someone to just come off the bench and just do something, just didn't we? Just lift it. Um, but yeah, like, I think, honestly, long stuff. I, I don't see why he didn't start the day. Like, just, and Emil Kraft, yeah, he's one of my new players that's just come in. But Mankio didn't deserve to lose his spot. Like, he just, like, I never thought I would actually say that because I don't like Mankio, but. Um, honest to God, like he didn't deserve to lose that. Like he was, to be honest. Do you know when Yedlin first started? Yeah, he was kind of like him today, wasn't he? Like, Shaky. yeah, he was just, he just didn't, he didn't know how to wear the shirt. That was it. Like, <laughs> it's true, he didn't know how to wear the shirt. And Mankyo, if I think he was in, he would have handled that player that was coming down the left a lot. Like, he might have handled that player. Like, but yeah, just. You shouldn't have done them changes today. It was wrong by Bruce today. Like, let's get on with the game. This is going to be painful, but bear with me. Look, first of all, Norwich, you deserved the win. These were absolutely sensational. I can't deny that. And you know, we we get a lot of criticism, but at least as I mentioned on one of the previous videos, you'll you'll get honesty from us. Play like that, you'll upset a couple of the big boys. I'm telling you, if you play like that, these were absolutely sensational. Yeah. I like your fullbacks. I like Pookie, Hatrick. I like a couple of midfielders who we'll learn about. Look, I don't know much about them. I'm not going to stand here and say, oh, oh, he's great in the championship. No, I don't know much about them. Got our former goalkeeper, Tim Krull, who's had, he's been, had a couple of bad years, but now it looks like he's coming back. But the game itself, I mean, oh, Christ, it was just so painful the first half, wasn't it? I'll just say one thing. We were the championship team tonight. Like, honest to God, it was it was painful to watch. It was like, it was like we had been in the championship and would come up in third place like literally the way the way that game was tonight was just diabolical like i'm i'm disgusted with that performance like honest yeah like i know it's all negativity and stuff like that but if you were here you would understand like and all the fans that come down today they deserve a refund <laughs> exactly they deserve a refund today. Uh, Norwich fans are going to say that's a great volley i would say it is a good volley the brav cam then on the negative side possibly should do better Great goal, one nil up, and he just, we, I said to you, didn't I said, uh, just get it half time, one yeah. nil down. And that's how bad it was, just get it in half time. The chance with Emil Croth in the first half, which a lot of people thought was Richie, he blazed it over. That's probably Newcastle's best and only chance for a long, long period of the game. Norwich fans, I think the atmosphere was, was pretty oh. sensational on one particular, uh, the ground, the stand next to us as well. Yeah. I thought they were really yeah. loud. It's one of the loudest stands I've seen. The, the rest of the stadium was quiet, but that stand was rocking. Stand was literally it was like, mint, wasn't it? Do you know, do you know our, way, our way of support when, like, say, like, we had a massive club, like, like live out, out, out the stand. Right, we fill out the stand or something, yeah? Like, actually, to be honest, I'm not going to say it was like Leicester because Leicester was special, but it was like literally like it was like, like us in the way end at Leicester. That's what that it stand was. was, it, was like. it was really good to praise again and now it's once more. Playing like that, you still, you still quite easily steal. But the second half, it got slightly better, but yeah. I think as soon as the goals, the second one and, uh, and then the third, the third one's a bit of a joke. Yeah. Um, second one, yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but this, the Norwich were just sensational. It was really difficult for Newcastle. It was painful to watch. A lot of frustration in, amongst the fans, yeah, effing and blinding. Yeah. Um, people, sh the fans shouting at players, yeah, do better. Fans actually fighting as well. Like, I've seen that. Um, like Newcastle fans fighting with Newcastle fans, which was a bit weird, which I've seen. Um, but the third game in a row, I've seen controversy uh, with that. Just, uh, it's just Alice. Do you know what it is? It's the tension of that owner like it, it literally is it's the tension of the owner like yes yes like oh, yes we lost today but like if you think about it in general right if we lost today and mike ashley wasn't owner we had a different owner the atmosphere wouldn't the mood, have been yeah, yeah. the the mood that we are in right now wouldn't be like this because we would have hope 
we'll be like, oh, on to the next game, let's go to the next game, let's let's do something then. But today, <laughs> you could tell that we've been deprived of everything from that owner. Like, literally, yeah. I'm not even going to say his name because he's not worth getting name mentioned. We'll, we'll like, come on to uh, Steve Bruce in a second. But yeah, second half, it was, it was dreadful. And I've got to pick on Steve Bruce, I'm Gani. Yeah. I thought it was shocking the day. You would have seen the score and the score in the players. We both rated him a zero. I thought it was absolutely his decision making, his lineup was poor, um, influence in the game was poor, tactics. Yes, Joe Linton had a shocking game, but you just put Mouton on like flag. Fuck that. Take a defender off, chuck a striker on, gun for it. If you're getting beat 2 0, fuck it, you may as well exactly. get beat 3 0. You may as well get 4 0. At least have some hope. That gives the fans desire. The only thing I have to praise today is the fucking fans deserve a lot of respect to seeing the coaches go past with before, us we're staying yeah. over, loads more who are travelling four or five hours to watch this bag of shite. And this was fucking shite tonight. It was. Embarrassed to be a Newcastle fan tonight. I'm proud to be a Newcastle fan, but the performance embarrasses me. Third goal, the whole place gans off. And they're singing about Alan Shearer and what have you. Um, really, really poor. A lot of players we'll talk about in a second, but this is what Steve Bruce said. What a disappointment with the... Uh with the performance with and without the ball, we haven't done enough. We've had a big opportunity in the first half to, um, you know, with a big couple of chances, but if we're going to be brutally honest, which I try and always be, then we haven't done enough. Um, and, and that's the disappointing thing for me. We knew, and we spoke about Norwich, new team into the Premier League, full house, you know, the first home game. And uh, we weathered the first storm after the first 15, 20 minutes, which we knew was coming. And um, but then we haven't done enough to take part in the game, so we have to get our teeth stuck into it this week and um, and be and be ready and be better for next week. So that was Steve Bruce's thoughts. Look, we know I've already I've just slated him before. You know how I feel about that. Um, a lot of players were really poor, but who who stood out? It was shocking for you. It was shocking. To be honest, I've got to say, uh, I've got to say. I, I, like, to be honest, Kraft. <laughs> like, he, he well, I thought Kraft was. I thought Hayden was poor. Yeah. I thought Key yeah. was shocking. I, I thought Richard was under poor. I didn't even see Key on the ball. Like, honest to God. Just your eyesight. Oh. <laughs> no, like, I honestly didn't even see Key on the ball much. Like, yeah, he might have been on it, but I <laughs> didn't notice it was him. Um, but honest to God. I thought Paul Dummett was poor. Paul Dummett didn't do n nothing that game. Like, could have been worse. Like, he had a few. Uh, sorry. He had a few. He had a few of them chances where he could do them slide tackles that he's normally iconic for. Yeah. Oh, I thought that would have been a dodgy scooter. Uh, he had. He had a couple of them chances where he could have done them. Uh, them. Them iconic slide tackles, but he just didn't. He yeah. didn't do it. I think the, the player will get a little bit of praise. It's the Shelby goal, which I forgot yeah. to mention about there. The consolation right at the end. It was something I said to you as well. Mm -hmm. It would be nice for Newcastle just to score the day. And we did. It was a good team goal. A really good, good team goal. And Shelby needs to go on and score more goals this season. I've said it in year after year, and people disagree with this, is that John Joe Shelby should be scoring 10 goals a season with the ability that he's got. I know he plays deep, but he's on set pieces as well for me. He should be getting 10. But that was a good goal. It was a really good goal and now we've got two defeats from two keep an eye on the live show the radio show of course the lads will be t t uh, talking about it for two hours for about the whole week with Newcastle live on 102.5 FM Nova Radio Nova Northeast <laughs> um, going forward then we've got a week and the, the pressure will crank now a little bit on Steve yeah. Bruce because I personally don't think we'll get now from Spurs, no. and I'm just being realistic, I'm not bullshitting you. It is realistic. Like. I don't think we'll get now from Spurs, so if we, if we do get beat off Spurs, let's just go with the, mm -hmm. that what we are thinking, and it's likely that's three defeats from three, that does happen, it's and the pressure's going to crank if, and crank and crank up. If, if, we lose, if, we, if we get beaten, which, we expect, which we expect to get, like I think we need to change our tactics, we need to have the three or up to Change the formation or? I, I think we need to change the formation in general, like, to be honest, yes. Like people may people may judge us for this, but I think we need to go to a flat back four again because the way the way the team is, yeah, like flat back four. Um, if, we're, if we keep shipping goals, then yes, I'll probably agree. But right. if, we, if we get beat nil, uh, sorry, if we draw no nil against Spurs or a one nil defeat in defence uh, plays well, yeah. I'll probably counter that. I'll probably, uh, but if we're shipping goals, and I, yeah, but like we need we need to be honest, we need that we need that extra attack up front, like. Take out, like, to be honest, that game of day, right? I'll be completely honest. I would have took out Hayden. Yes, I scored. Yes, I scored him a four, but I would have took out Hayden and just kept Shelby and Longstaff in the middle and put 
another another striker up top. Like I also I also feel that Joe Linton got a lot of it stick today. Norwich fans have obviously been taking the piss out of the right. striker for forty million. Um, but in some aspects, I do stick up for him by saying. When he was holding the ball, he had two players on him constantly yeah. and he had no one, even Almiron was the nearest man, which was about 10 to 15 yards away. And then after Almiron, he had nobody for about 20 yards. It was so deep because Norwich were fucking sensational today. And we're going to end it on a positive and say, well done, Norwich City. You were absolutely brilliant today. You deserve those three points. Play like that, no doubts that you'll stay up. From Carroll Rhodes, see you later.